Hey, what's up, YouTube? Fritz Jones Investing back with another video, and today we'll be talking about how Tesla slashed their prices and also how they're faring versus their competition. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And with no further ado, let's get right into the video. So taking you directly to Tesla Design Studio, you can see that the Model 3's price has been dropped to $43,990. Now previously the price was $46,990, so that represents a 6.4% drop. And if you jump to the Model 3 Performance, you can see that the price has been reduced to $53,990. The original price for this was $62,990, so this represents a 14.2% drop. If you still want those options for the paint, uh, the white is included, but everything else is going to cost you a little bit with the red costing you up to $2,000. This comes with the 20 inch Uber turbine wheels, which I think looks beautiful, by the way. Uh, the interior, the black is included and the white is uh, for an extra thousand dollars. Now, there are some other software that you can buy the enhanced autopilot for $6,000 and the full self driver for $15,000. I don't personally think these are worth it at the moment, but if there was a monthly subscription for an adequate price, let's say $99 a month, then it'll be something I'd be willing to consider in the future. Next up is the Tesla Model Y, which is by far Tesla's most popular selling vehicle. So the price has been dropped to $52,990. Previously, the price was $65,990. So this represents a 20% decrease. So this is even before you consider the EV tax credit of $7,500. If you add that in, it breaks the price down to right around $46,000. So if a lot more people were on the fence about getting a Tesla EV, this can kind of convince them otherwise. But this is only until March. So people have to make sure that they take advantage of this before the opportunity runs out. So the Tesla Model Y was Tesla's highest selling EV with approximately 252,000 units sold last year. The top selling overall vehicle in the United States last year was the Ford F-Series pickup with over 653,000 units. But with Tesla upgrading their Giga Texas and their Giga Berlin factories, I'm sure that they're gonna be able to sell over 400,000 Model Ys this year and again, sell the most EVs. I do have a small gripe with Tesla. They did decrease their Model Y performance pricing. The new price is $56,990 down from $69,990, which represents a 23% discount. But I wish they would have offered this for less than $55,000 so that way people could have taken advantage of the $7,500 tax credit. One of my favorite vehicles is the Model S personally, and the price did decrease. The new price is $94,990 down from $104,990, which represents a 9.5% decrease. And also the Model S Plaid decreased down to $1. 14,990 down from 135,990, which was a 15.4% drop. Man, I wish we could go back to a time in 2020 when the Tesla Model S was still $69,420. If it were that price today, I would definitely drop a down payment and have that car out for delivery as soon as possible. On a more positive note, according to US News and World Report, Tesla takes top spot among luxury vehicles. The electric car company passes BMW to become the top selling luxury brand in America, becoming the first American brand to achieve this honor in almost 25 years. Congrats to Tesla for being able to improve their build quality. That was one of their knocks in the past, but it appears that they've adjusted this issue and made some improvements. One element that I'm glad changed in the design studio was for an option for the round or the yoke steering wheel. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of the yoke steering wheel. I think it's ugly, especially since I've been driving with the round steering wheel my whole life, but that's just my opinion. You can let me know down in the comments below. Do you like the round steering wheel or the yoke steering wheel better? Next up is the Tesla Model X, which has a discount of their own and their new price is $109,990, down from $129,90, which represents a 9.1% drop. And if you're looking at the Model X Plaid, the new price is $119,990, down from 138,990, which represents a 13.7% discount. I don't know why they don't just make the numbers even 110 or 120. Just call it a day. Come on now. The next stop, we'll look at Tesla's competition in the U.S. These were the top five EVs sold in the U.S. according to Electric.com. Number five was the Chevy Bolt EUV. Number four was the Tesla Model S. Number three was the Ford Mustang Mach E. Number two was the Tesla Model 3. And number one, which I mentioned earlier, was the Tesla Model Y with over 252,000 units sold. This was a top 10 list, so I will finish out the list for you guys. Uh, number six was the Tesla Model X. Number seven was the Hyundai Ionic 5. Number eight was the Kia EV6. Number nine was the Volkswagen ID4. And finally, number 10 was a combination of two vehicles the Rivian R1T and the Ford F-150 Lightning. I'm not sure how they came up with that portion of the list. So one of Tesla's main competitors according to sales is the Bolt EV, and this starts right around $26,500. However, you can spec it up to around $32,000 with some options. You will get the $7,500 tax rider with this, bringing the price down to right around $20,000. And with that, you will get an EPA estimated range of 259 miles and a zero to 60 time in 6.5 seconds. I dislike the Bolt EV because of its charging infrastructure, which is very weak. And this car has been re 
be called so many times because it catches on fire. In my personal opinion, I think Tesla's main competitor in the US at this time is the Mach-E, and this starts right around $47,000, and you can spec it up all the way to the Mach-E GT, which starts right around $70,000 before you get those dealer markups. Now with that, you will get 270 miles of range. However, this does not qualify for the EV tax credit because of its price of over $50,000, and it does have a zero to 60 time in 3.8 seconds. I think it's a pretty good looking vehicle. However, I think it suffers from the weaknesses of the Bolt EUV with the weak charging infrastructure. I'm not sure if you can take this car on road trips. Now, if you do get the base model, you will get 247 miles of range in a zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds. However, this range is much less than you will get in the Model Y, which is 330 miles. So another disadvantage there. So I think that Tesla's primed for a great 2023. You can see that they delivered 1.313 million and produced 1.369 million vehicles in 2022, which was a 44% increase over 2021. If they could do this again, then they'll produce and deliver right around 2 million vehicles in 2023. So I'm excited for new products from Tesla this year. This is just outside of the Austin Tesla factory, and this is some drone footage by Joe Tegmeyer. That big machine in the middle, it's called a Gigacast, and it's supposed to be making the Cybertruck. Now they have to put that 9,000 ton machine together. It should take a couple months, and then they should be starting production on that. I was hearing that there are around 1.2 to 1.3 million Cybertruck pre-orders. So I'm excited to see how many they'll be able to put together this year. I'm also excited to see how many companies have ordered the Tesla semi truck and also what price point they're going to be able to get the truck at and how the sales of these trucks are going to be able to affect Tesla's bottom line. I'm interested to see if there'll be any new product announcements like a Tesla Model 2, something like less than 250 miles of range, less than $30,000. I think at that price point, they'd be able to get a lot more people interested in buying their vehicle and a lot more people will be willing to get into the Tesla ecosystem. So I'm very interested to hear your thoughts. Are you interested in buying a Tesla now that they've lowered their prices down a little bit from 9% all the way up to 20%? I still think that Tesla is the king of EVs with over 1.3 million vehicles manufactured and delivered last year. And when you look at their competition, it's very weak out there. When you look at the Mach-E, you're not getting as much range and you're paying more money. And that's even before the dealer markups. I'm interested to see how the F-150 Lightning is going to fare against the Cybertruck. Um, I do know that most of the F-150 sales are coming from the gas counterpart. And then you look at the other companies. How is the Blazer going to fare against the Model Y? I don't think the Hummer can really compare because of its price point and it's a very niche market. And also how the Silverado is going to compare versus the Cybertruck. Uh, Polestar, I think, is a very beautiful vehicle. I think that's made by Volvo, but I don't think they're going to be able to compete with Tesla. VW, you have Rivian, Porsche, Mercedes, BMW. Jaguar with their I-Pace, you have Hyundai, Kia, and then Jeep is supposed to be having some offerings also. I just don't think any of those companies with their charging infrastructure, with the manufacturing capability, and with their battery technology is going to be able to compete with Tesla. So I'll be excited to see what they can do for 2023, and hopefully that stock price will bounce back and help make me some more money. All right, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Learn something. I'll catch you next time.